Welcome to Durham Cathedral. My name is Rob and I've been a volunteer and guide here for over 20 years. I'm standing next to the Pelican Lectern, which was designed by the famous Victorian architect George Gilbert Scott. He used as a source for his design a description in an anonymous 16th century work called The Rites of Durham of a lectern that they had in monastic times. The Rites of Durham say that it was uh, the, the goodliest lettering of brass that was in all the country. That unfortunately didn't survive the Civil War. It was reputedly sold by an English jailer in 1650 uh, when the cathedral housed Scottish prisoners after the Battle of Dunbar. The man he chose, that Gilbert Scott chose to make the lectern was Francis Skidmore of Coventry, a very famous metal worker who had a long association with Gilbert Scott. The lectern itself is made of 806 separate pieces of metal. It is described as being bronze and partly electroplated in silver, although it always seems to be made of brass. Um, it is embellished with amethysts and rock crystal. Amethysts are symbolic of purity and healing, and you often find amethysts in bishops' rings. Rock crystal is also symbolic of purity and was used in medieval reliquaries uh, lining the box in thin sheets which had been polished. Why a pelican? This is because in pre-Christian days the pelican was thought of as a bird who pierced her breast with her beak in order to feed her chicks with her own blood during times of famine. This was easy to believe because the pelican rests her head across her breast when she's, uh, when she's asleep and also she has a red tip to her beak and during the breeding season the Dalmatian pelican in particular has a pouch which turns bright red. There is another story which comes from Greece in about the second century which talks a, a little less kindly about the pelican. It tells how the chicks, as they are growing up, begin to strike at the mother and father with their beaks, trying to put out their eyes. The mother and father pelican, in retaliation, strike back at the chicks and kill them. And on the third day, the mother pelican, full of sorrow, pierces her breast, sprinkles the blood over her dead chicks. They come back to life, but she, of course, perishes. The Christians adopted the pelican as an analogy of Christ who died that we might have new life, who shed his blood that we might have new life. There are samples of pelican, uh, examples of pelican all over. I have a photograph of one in a church in Dubrovnik. If you look at Shakespeare's uh, place, you will find references to pelicans in Richard II, King Lear and uh, Hamlet. In Hamlet, Laertes says, Thus wide I will ope my arms, and like the kindly, life-rendering pelican, repass them with my blood. The Queen Elizabeth had her portrait painted in 1575, and on her breast in the picture is a jewel showing the pelican and her chicks. In fact, a lot of people still call it the pelican portrait. I saw a pelican behind Inspector Morse at the end of one of the episodes of that series in a church, a mosaic of the pelican in Oxford. Now that you know the story of the pelican, I'm sure you will come across her as you travel around.